uh, you can be very intelligent and very good at what you do, and you can still be stupid. Hello, yeah, and in a previous video we introduced the idea of the acronym SORPS Salt, Acid, Water, Pressure, System Now, in our understanding, this acronym helps us best understand the gas CO2 or what some people have called fixed air and in our understanding, um, CO2 or SORPS is always produced by the reaction between a salt and an acid. Okay, so typically, for example, we would have a salt being sodium bicarbonate, and we would react that with um, a vinegar, acetic acid, or ethanoic acid. You can use sulfuric acid, calcium carbonate, if you wanted to, to produce the same gas or a similar gas. A salt, acid, water pressure system. Now. To help us best understand that acronym, we've got, the, we've got the salt, we've got the acid. Now, all acids contain water. It's got to be remembered that all acids contain water. So our water is present, okay? And when we think about the pressure, um, a salt and acid reaction will create or generate pressure. Now, that pressure basically has come from the pressure that's been applied to these products during their manufacture. We've got to remember that these have been manufactured, they've been processed. So all of that pressure that's been applied during that processing time will be released during the salt acid reaction. Okay, This is why we see um, bags fill up with gas, because that's pressure. Okay. Now, um, what we're going to do in this little demonstration is that we are going to um, show to you um, what these products will do individually to lime water. Now lime water, calcium hydroxide, is the classic test for the presence of carbon dioxide or sulfur dioxide. Um, lime water will turn milky okay, in the presence of those gases. That's what we're told. So essentially we can apply sorps to be uh, to do the same, will turn lime water milky. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to fill up these test tubes with lime water and then we're going to add some of these products individually into the test tubes just to see what happens to the lime water. Will, will it turn milky? Will it, will it not turn milky? Okay, so here we go, let's get going. And uh, We've got our lime water here, okay, in this tub. Uh, we're just going to pipette uh, some lime water in. Okay, there we go. We've got there, and we've got there, and we've got there. We don't need a lot. There we go. And we've got there as well. Okay, so there we go. Superb. Let's put that to one side. Now, just to show that we do have lime water, and we're not cheating in any way, um, we're going to blow through this pipe into the lime water. Let's just get a cleaner in, there we go. There, there we go, look at that, that's nice. Right. We can clearly see that the lime water's gone milky. Now, in, uh, in educational uh, place, places of education that they'll get children to uh, blow through lime water, bubble their breath through lime water like I've just done, to demonstrate the idea that we breathe out CO2. Okay. Now, it's our understanding that um, it's the salt part of the gas that turns lime water milky. It's not um, which, which essentially means that we do not breathe out CO2. 
um, per se. And we, this is how we can demonstrate that using some of these um, things. So um, what we're going to do now is we're going to use our um, sodium bicarbonate, okay, first, and we're just going to drop a little bit into the, uh, the, the test tube here just to see whether this will go milky. Yeah, I mean, when we, when we look at, um, when we think about sodium bicarbonate and we actually, we actually grab and take a little bit, here we go, let's just put a little bit on the, on the, on the top here, okay, so everyone can see it. It's very, it's very crystalline structure. It's very powdery and it's very, very fine indeed, okay, this stuff. So we can imagine that when it reacts with an acid, it can get even finer so it can fill up even a gas and become an impurity. Because in our, in our understanding, sodium bicarbonate would be an impurity that would be contained within a pressure system. And that is how we would define a gas, a pressure system that contains impurities. Okay, so here we go. Let's just take some of this and put it in the test tube. I'm not going to put a lot in, I'm just going to put a little bit in. Okay, I'll, I hope people can, can, can everyone see that, how much I've got there. So have a look, yeah? Yeah, there we go. I'm going to pop it in. I may not even put it, all of it in, I'm just going to tap it. Yeah, it's nice and gently in, there we go, right there. It's going in. There you go. Now I've not even put in all of that at all. I've still got some left on the, uh, on the little spatula there. And you can see how milky that's going. I've put in very little indeed and we can see how milky that's gone. There we go, straight away. Okay. So let's try the, let's try the acetic acid. Let's try the vinegar. Okay, here we go. Now we should be able to drop, uh, we should be able to drop uh, a small amounts of vinegar into this test tube. Okay, I'm just going to put this up because it fits. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I've put in ten drops of vinegar in here and it has remained clear. Okay? So <clears throat> what we could do, what we could do now is we could add some vinegar to this test to, to see what happens. Okay, so we'll do the same again. Let's put in, uh, let's say, well, let's see what happens. I haven't put in more than 10 drops, that's for sure. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, there we go, five. Five drops, five drops of acid, and we can clearly see we've got some white uh, precipitate floating around, only small pieces, but it's essentially gone clear. Let's just shake it up as well. There we go. And it's all gone. Even the white precipitate that was there. It's all gone cl clear. Okay. So what we've is essentially seen through those demonstrations is the vinegar will neutralise cloudy lime water. Vinegar or an acid will not turn lime water milky at all. Given, <coughs> given, <coughs> given the limitations of what we're doing at the moment. Okay, now let's try our last little bit. Um, here we go, we've got uh, our little bit of what people would call as being sodium acetate. Okay, now it's been, it's been washed with water. Okay, so bear in mind, so all of the acid should have been removed it's been washed with clean water, uh, so let's have a little, take a little smidgen out of this, not much. So I've got that little bit there, okay, let's pop that on, and uh, let's see if we can just drop a little bit on there without. Oh, seems to be like a clean, oh there we go, and instant, instantly, okay, we can see it's gone milky. So, there we go, okay, let's just give it a shake, yeah, milking, 
Now it seems, from what, from what, from what we've demonstrated, it seems that uh, the reason why lime water turns milky is simply because of the sodium bicarbonate and not the vinegar. Now the thing is, is that we've got to think about that uh, we've got sodium and we've got the bi bicarb part of the product. Now it is our understanding to help us understand the salt acid water pressure system better. It is our understanding that the sodium provides the salt and it's not the carbonate. Now a carbonate, a lot of people would say, is a salt. Um, it's carbonic acid, uh, derived from carbonic acid, and that is when CO2 is, is saturated, into, dissolved into water. Okay. But the thing is, is that we've got to ask ourselves, well, how is it possible that carbon can be miscible with water? We know sodium can be. Sodium is a salt. Sodium can also dissolve in water. Okay, got, we get many salts derived from sodium. Sodium chloride, sodium bicarbonate, you know, sodium phosphate, sodium sulfate. You know, all of these salts from sodium. Whereas carbon, how can we get a car carbonate salt from carbon when carbon itself doesn't mix with water? It just doesn't seem right. Um, we've got a test tube here um, and it's got uh, well, just plain water from the tap and in the top we've just added a little bit of um, <coughs> powdered charcoal okay which is um, an allotrope say of carbon so if we shake it up okay very briskly we can see that the water and the charcoal do not mix and they will eventually separate out as one would expect with immiscible substances. Okay, so given this piece of information, we've got to ask ourselves that is, well, we've got to ask the question, is CO2 the proper name for the gas? In our understanding, we think the nomenclature is, is very um, skewed and it um, doesn't help us to understand. This is the whole reason why we have um, just come, conjured up in our minds the acronym SORPS, Salt Acid Water Pressure System, because it best describes everything, it best describes the uh, reaction that we see and the effects that we get when we uh, play around with all of these substances with lime water. Uh, one final thing to finish off with, and that is one of the reasons why we think um, CO2 is um, heavily mentioned uh, when, it, when it comes to the weather, climate and everything is simply because when we look up, up there what we see is a salt acid pressure system basically. Our, um, it's our understanding that our weather um, is a salt acid water pressure system and this is why CO2 emissions are very 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 um, what's the word? They're very prominent in affecting uh, the, the weather and the climate because simply because too much salt or too much acid that have been uh, released by industry um, in, along with pollutants and stuff can affect the balance of our weather system. And that's basically, um, in, our, in our way, it's a very good way of understanding CO2. The earth isn't round, it's flat. How do you know? I've observed it in all my travels over Europe. It's flat, everywhere it's flat.